In this video, we'll take a look at foreshortening, or drawing the figure in perspective. There is an endless number of ways that you can draw the human figure. For myself, I like to take a four-step approach. I'll draw a line from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet. This will help to ensure that I get the entire figure on the picture plane. From there, I'll locate a line for the shoulders and a line for the waist. Once I have these important lines in place, I can then look at the bone structure of the figure. I usually draw lines to indicate each longer bone within the body. Essentially, I'm creating a loose stick figure. I'll also include an oval shape for the head. With these essential lines in place, I can then build off of them to create the shapes that make up the form of the body. I can also add information about the clothing. Because our initial lines establish the overall proportion of the figure, we can concentrate on the contour lines that we actually observe on the subject at this point, making drawing the figure a whole lot easier. Now, of course, this method works great when your figure is from a straight on view, but what happens when your figure is in perspective, when the angles are a little bit more challenging? This is referred to as foreshortening. Whenever you draw the figure in perspective, we have a foreshortened view of many of the body parts. Of course, when we're drawing a figure that's foreshortened, the challenge goes way up. But if we pay attention to a couple of key elements, we can make things quite a bit easier on ourselves. The first thing we'll look for is the length of line used to describe different elements. Take a look at how long the line is for the figure standing from a straight on view and how much it's compressed when we draw the figure from above. This means all of the other body parts are going to be compressed, creating quite a bit of distortion. We can clearly see this distortion when we compare the length of line used for the head from the straight on view and compare it to the length of line used to describe the head from above. Because in this case, the head is closer to the viewer, the head is much larger. Another example of distortion that's happening here is the length of line used to describe the leg. Notice how long the line is when the figure is on a straight on view and how short it becomes when we draw the figure from above in perspective. Notice how foreshortening affects the length of nearly every single body part when we draw the figure in perspective. Now, here again, once we've got the basic elements in place and we've made comparisons between the length of line and we understand the distortion that takes place, we can easily draw in the rest of the details of our figure. Now, this same phenomenon happens, of course, when we're drawing a figure that's lying down. Remember, any body part that comes towards the viewer is going to create some distortion and is also going to affect the length of line that we use to describe it. Now, since handling foreshortening can be quite a big challenge, it might be easier to think about each body part as being a geometric form. Take, for example, this cylinder. If we were to draw cross contour lines over the contours of the form of the cylinder, we notice that these lines curve slightly. We can think about each section or each body part of the figure as being a geometric form. For example, we can lay this cylinder down and make it appear as if it's going back in space. Here we can draw the cross contour lines over and allow those lines to curve as they go backwards into space. Maybe we'll draw a sphere for a joint and then we'll draw an additional cylinder. Notice how these cross contour lines continue to curve around the form of the cylinder. If we were to translate this concept into the actual body parts of a figure, like the upper portion and lower portion of an arm and a hand of a figure, we can actually draw the cross contour lines over this to have a better understanding of the form of the subject. This is just, of course, to help us better understand the form of the subject. These cross contour lines, of course, aren't actually visible on the subject, but we can apply this concept when we draw the figure to better understand how the form behaves in space. Some people like to think of these lines as being coils that recede back in space, something like you would see on a slinky. So when we draw the actual form of the lower portion of the legs that are quite foreshortened, 
we might decide to draw the cross contour lines so we can better understand how these legs recede backwards into space. And of course, we'll continue to keep in mind that the length of line used for individual body parts will more than likely shrink because of the foreshortening. We'll also consider the fact that distortion is at play. And in this case, the length of line for the foot is much longer because the foot is closer to the viewer. Once we've made these comparisons and we've got our important information on the surface of the paper, then it's very easy to go back in and fill in the additional information needed to complete the drawing, like the contour lines and the shapes for the individual parts of the body. So let's review. When we're dealing with a figure in perspective, this is referred to as foreshortening. And with foreshortening, you'll notice that certain elements become much shorter depending on the point of view. We'll also be dealing with distortion, where some of the elements will be much larger depending again on the point of view. Drawing the figure in perspective or foreshortening can be challenging, but when you know what to look for and you know how to apply it to your drawings, it's much, much easier.